Hello everybody. Welcome finally to a update of the 148 scale Hercules gunship that I've been working on for the past couple of years now and we're approaching some finality. That's the word I'm going to use right here. Yes. With this model. As you can see this is the port side. This is the left side looking at it correctly for the most part this side is complete the bay down here is all finished up lights are going everywhere lights are going really really nice this is an interesting model of course this is a first for me Doing something other than Star Trek, I think. Yeah, yeah. So I was a little quick um, Ferrari Enzo that I'd thrown together, um, which was a snap kit anyway, and it was already pre painted. So there wasn't very much to do. But as far as all the wiring and lighting goes and stuff, this is the first for me. And this has been an adventure, it's been a learning experience. Definitely for me, as a learning curve. But also very, very fun. Went ahead and cut straight to having all the lights on because, come on, things are better with the lights on. Some things. It's got lights. Turn them on! Pan down here, and we've got that bright light on the back. And there is another one of those on the back of the uh, starboard, the right side of the plane there. You can see I've had an issue with that side over there. And it was very much the accident. i explain that here in a moment. But, um, you know, quick, easy fix there. Let that take let it sort itself out overnight. And then it'll be ready to continue to go on. But uh, as you can see there, I like that little glowing light on the side. Came across a video on YouTube that had these, this, uh, had one of these planes with a lot of neon glow on the sides of it and, it just looked absolutely awesome to me, and if I were to do another one, it'd be less on the inside. As far as like, you know, I have to construct everything that's inside of there is all handmade, except for the chairs. The two chairs up there are the only things that I didn't build, and those were just reset from up in the cockpit area um, in the rear computer area to back here to go with that targeting system over there but everything was constructed the howitzer the bofer and that gatling up there in the front all of that's constructed by hand and put together from as many different reference pictures as i could to come across to get it you know somewhat accurate ish without just necessarily being a hundred percent because things are different even different style guns are different i mean it's like it's like the rx8 you get the uh oh three through oh seven oh eight and it had one style you get the oh nine had another one from the oh three oh four you have oh uh, five and oh six i believe you have four speed auto gets oh seven you got a six speed automatic so things are different for certain things, and that's the way it is with the guns. But rest assured, those guns are there. 105 is awesome, though. No, love that thing. It is cool. It is cool. They weren't difficult to build as well. But uh, back to that video I was explaining about though had all these neon glow tubes and you know you had one on you had some on the sides either side there were a couple up front on the tips of the uh tail wings back here or at least going you know up there large dorsal tail fin back here it was going up the side of it was just awesome so if i were to do another one of these that really would be my focus would be just some exterior lighting a little bit of interior i wouldn't even have the um 
doors on the back motorized. They would just be open all the time. They'd be sitting there, but I just want that glow. That would just be awesome. So, panning around here, letting the back of the lighting that's actually lighting the bay inside light the cockpit. Pretty cool. See the fiber optics going in there, those greens and stuff. You can see them on the back side of here, which of course that will not be visible. And you can see all this light that's bathing down here is coming from the wheel well, from the front wheels up there. Uh, you got the spotlight right there in front of the rear wheel, the uh, back wheels back there. And there is actually a light inside of the wheel well in there. Just can't really make it out. But I want it to be one. Uh, you got your spot right there, right above the exterior fuel cell. Pretty cool. Got the drop right there where four uh, Hellfire missiles are going to go. Got a little bit of repair to do on those, but it won't be too much, if it will even be necessary. We'll see. Got your uh, wingtip spot that's over there, panning around that wing, as you can see here. That right there should denotate a little bit of an issue I had, which this right here came off. Dealing with <clears throat> this. Okay, no, it wasn't that. It's actually trying to look for a set of wires that I was using to connect all of the uh, wiring for the plane together into one to run it down the hole going in underneath the bottom. And I was trying to set the top back on the box and it slipped out my hand when it was sitting over there amongst all that stuff. Yeah. And fortunately, the only two things that clipped off were one of the blades on the propellers and um, the refueling rig that sits right there. But, you know, still got my two prongs, just sits up in there, lay it upside down, some epoxy, bam, that's back on. The wingtip, the same thing. Super glue it on first, then lock some epoxy on the back of it, and then bam, it's back on there. Not a biggie. The only problem I foresee is, you know, redoing the glue, redoing the, the glue, the uh, paint around this. And it mainly just be because of or this area on the bottom of the wing. Other than that, that's it. I have run this with it fully together with both sides, the propellers moving, and all of it tied in together. I think I'm going to have to do what I did on my first TOS. And that was to run the motors on a separate power supply. I did with that TOS. The motors inside of the Bassar collectors were on different, was on a different power supply. I think I'm going to have to do the same thing here. doesn't have to be so much. These are fairly small, more like RC uh, car motors that are there. Very high RPM. And it won't take very much. Either that or I thought, well, no, because this, well, yeah, I could find something with a very high amperage and that should crank out just enough of what I need to. I'll try that as well. It's on for the look for the power supply. Yum, yum, yum. Okay. So I'm going to go over here, gonna turn these lights off so we can see her pitch black, almost pitch black. There it is. And that red light over there is from the bottom of the mouse that is connected to my laptop. Let me flip this thing over. Oh my. Oh my. Can't do it like George Decay, but geez, I could try. But honestly, I'm going to drop down here. I'm going to move this current project. Ooh, going to have another problem. Star, Star Trek is really causing me a problem with this aircraft. <laughs> um, but, you know, we come around here with Pam. We look and forgive me for saying so, but that's badass right there. That is absolutely cool. And I really love the fact I wanted to use different lighting for the spots between the uh, spots right here and right here over the external fuel cell. I don't know if you can see my hand. I'm blocking the light now. I'm blocking the light. <laughs> Vulcan salute. But want those to be different from the tips. And usually whenever I see some uh, versions of this aircraft, that's what I see. So that's what I wanted. 
in the cockpit area do have the colorations and stuff. Usually, especially at night, cockpit is lit in green. allows for the pilot to see just a little bit better. Plus, it just looks all militaristic-like, in my opinion. But, um... <clears throat> But forgive me if I'm wrong, if that's, you know, as far as the uh, color green inside the cockpit for the pilot to see better. I'm just saying so because it just seems like at night, that's what you got. You think that that's what it is. So here's the cockpit window that's going to go across there. It's still masked off, but, um, you know, that's ready to get glued on. I'm going to have to put some braces on the back of that before I glue it on there. So it's nice and secure. But really, for the most part, except for a little bit more fiddling. This right here is ready to get glued onto this part, and this half of the plane is done. All this is done. It is awesome. It really is. And it's a great view. Trying to do as much lighting as I can. Now, this is an aircraft, so it's not very much lighting that's going to be affected on this, like a Star Trek model, which you have all of your windows lit up. And giving you, you know, a lots of light warping the cells glowing and a deflector dish and impulse and thrusters lit up and you know, you don't have all that. Plus your navs and strobes going, you don't have all that. This will have some blinking going on with it, but other than that, this is it. So as many lights as I can find and you know, it's what you want to do. It's unique for me, unique model creations. This is what we do. Find ways of making it different from anything else I've seen. So, uh, with that being said, gonna go for it. Do a little bit more panning around here. These lights are bright, and it really is lighting up this room. Not to mention the three lights I got over there. They're very bright too. But this aircraft is actually very light. All that light over there on that wall uh, is being cast from this plane. So, you know, the red up here on the tip, that's pretty cool. And this one back here on the back, like that's very bright. You know, that would make for spots on the small scale. Uh, starship get them going up in there right and I got a method for that too so but anyway though uh, I go forth and continue to work on this and those of you out there building models continue keep building my friends like the Dose Keys guy who keeps saying stay thirsty my friends well keep building and those of you who are not, pick up something. Snap kit. It could be a snap kit. Those are pretty cool too. Because in the end, that damn snap kit actually required a screwdriver. Yeah, I couldn't snap the screws in there and I could have been breaking something. So, and but anyway though, I, <laughs> I'm going on. I'm going to have to do something about that though. I don't want that really bleeding through. Just, I have a fix. I always have a fix. Have a fix. Molly World, there are fixes everywhere. You can fix the fix. So, oh, there are a lot of heavy, thick fiber optics, though, and just going along everywhere. Everywhere. All right, guys.